Hi, welcome to this Cinema 4D tutorial with me, Tim Clapham from hellolux.com. And in this quick tip, we're going to look at creating a kind of procedural rock generator. The result that I'm going for is the look of stacked rocks. And this technique is 100% procedural, so you should be able to input any geometry. And with a few tweaks, um, it should be able to get a fairly good result. In the scene, you can see I've got a text spline. I'm actually going to hide this. And then the next thing is just to come up to the MoGraph menu, add in a Mo Spline. The reason I'm doing this is because we can set this to be Spline mode um, and sit, switch to the Spline tab, drag the text in, and this allows us to um, subdivide it in many different ways. Under the Object tab, let's just switch it to Line Display first of all, and then under Spline, I'm going to choose Step, and I'm going to set a step of I don't know. You can see what happens when we change that. You get a kind of much lower res version. Um, I'm going to set that to 15. Let's drop that into an extrude. Under the object tab, I'm going to set the offset to be 30 with a subdivision of 2. Let's just show the edges by pressing N, D. Oh, there you go. I think maybe three subdivisions. Now let's switch to the caps. I'm going to give it a bevel of 2 with one segment. And for the cap type, rather than N gone, let's choose Delaunay. So we've got some geometry across the faces and let's set the density to 100. So next I'm going to add in a Voronoi fracture. In the attribute manager under the sources let's use the point generator that's there by default but increase the point amount to 200 so we get a lot more fragments. Um, let's press NC to hide those edges. Switch to geometry glue and enable this and we're going to set that to cluster and that will join some of those pieces up and you can see it's set to 5 I'm going to set that to 100. So this basically takes the 200 fragments and connects them into 100 by joining them together and you can see that when I toggle it. Let's just hide the points from our generator, come back. You can also change the seed here to change the clusters. Now let's switch to detailing and we're going to enable detailing. Let's come down and uncheck use original edges and keep original surface. So the noise affects the geometry. I'm going to reduce that to 15 centimeters. You might also need to adjust the thong angle depending on the geometry you're using because sometimes you get these nasty shading errors. But I'm fine leaving that at 40. Now with the Voronoi fracture still selected, Shift C and add a plane effector. I'm going to switch to parameter and uncheck position, enable scale, uniform scale, and set this to minus 0.04. Okay, and you can see that scales each piece down and gives us these gaps. I think maybe they're a bit too big, those gaps, actually. So maybe minus 0.03. Yeah, I think that looks a little bit better. Okay, so the next thing to do is let's just rename this scale. And then select the Voronoi fracture again. Press Shift C. And this time I'm going to add remesh. If you hold Alt to add it to parent, come down and set the mesh density to 200. Wait for it to do its stuff, which might be a little bit quicker or slower than this, depending on your machine. Now, if we look at the edges, you can see we've got this topology here. It's um, quite low res and there's a few shading errors, but we could subdivide this, which would probably make it look a little bit nicer. Um, there we go. So this is one approach that you could use, but I don't really want to use a subdivision surface object. I'm going to use a redshift render tag later on but let's switch the remesh off select the Voronoi fracture again switch to the object tab and under the scale cells let's set the scale y to 0.1 and that's going to give us much more of a layered effect so that's much nearer to the result that I want I'm going to set the cluster amount lower 30 so we get these more obvious variation in size and you can obviously try adjusting the seed until you get something that you're happy with so you can adjust the seed here or you could come back to sources and you can adjust the seed here to change the distribution. There we go. Let's just leave it like that for now. Add another plane effector to the Voronoi fracture and this one I'm going to rename to position and we're going to just create a little bit of randomization in the position. So come to the parameter tab. Let's set the position X to 5, position Y to 0 and position Z to 5. Obviously there's no variation yet, so switch to the fields tab, add in a random field. 
okay and under remapping let's just come down and set the minimum value here to be minus 100 so we have values between minus 5 to plus 5 we do need to unclamp the fields list here and there you go and you can see that now if I toggle that it's giving us a bit more variation you might get some intersections which you might not like so we can change the random seed on the random field as well okay there we go and if we remesh this you can see that now we're getting much closer to the result that I showed you at the beginning now let's think about rendering this so I'm going to add a redshift object tag to the remesh and under geometry I'm going to override enable tessellation and also enable displacement so that's going to subdivide the object for us and if I just change my layout you can see I've got some materials here so this noise displacement I'm going to drop on the remesh if we have a look at this you can see that we've got four noises here um, we've got a Luca, Narki, Stupple and Poxo and they go into this color layer and you can see that I've used various blending modes and opacities to combine those they are wired into the surface so if we start our render view you can see the result of just that noise at the moment okay let's just look at it a bit closer there we go and you can see that's the result of that it's not exactly what I want so one thing I just wanted to show you is if we select all of these we can adjust the scale here and I'm going to set the X to 4 and the Z to 4 and that's going to stretch that noise out and you should see the result of that there we go in the render view so that noise is nicely stretched out and the next thing that I've done with that is I've actually taken that and mapped it with a gradient and here you can see the gradient so if we just wire that into the surface we should see the result of that there we go in this setup I've used the standard material so let's wire that in and select the standard material and you can see that I've used for the diffuse the Lambertian spheres model which is great for uh, rocks and things like that okay so I've also taken this and wired it into the ramp for reflection roughness and displacement so let's add the displacement so we can see that in our render there we go so I'm just going to reframe this like so and you can see that is the result that we get okay let's stop the render view and just switch off the Voronoi and the remesh because this is procedural we can literally just select our text spline and just change the type and everything will update and it should just work so I'm just going to write stack let's enable the Voronoi fracture there is the result of that remesh this and then we can have a look at a render and obviously you can use any other geometry not just type so I'm just going to put this full screen we can have a look so I hope you enjoyed that quick tip thanks for watching there are plenty more tutorials at hololux.com